Hello, I am Maria Jose Solano, um, or Maria Solos, as my GitHub and Reddit username is. Um, so today I will be just like sharing my story about like how I got started contributing to NeoVim. Um, I can see from the chat that people are healing me. And yes, I'm from Colombia. So um, if anyone here is Latin American, I guess that you can join the team, I guess. Um, but oh well, back to the story. Um, it all started as like how many things start in Neovim. It started with my config. Um, I was like getting started with Neovim, installing all of the plugins that I thought that I needed. Um, and I mean, I still use them, most of them. Um, but it started with Copilot. Um, you know, like um, I was like writing something in Copilot. Um, let's, okay. And so I got like that suggestion, right? And so um, you can see from my copilot config that I had mapped slash to dismissing the suggestion. Um, and then I noticed that when I typed um, slash in insert mode, I wouldn't be able to um, insert an actual slash because it would try to like trigger the copilot dismissal instead of like actually letting the character go through. And so, um, when I was configuring this, I, I made a simple like fix of having a key map that if Copilot was visible, then I would like invoke Copilot dismiss, otherwise it would insert a character. Um, and this was like four lines of code, right? Um, but then I noticed like, wait, this is actually like, this is not part of my config. This is an actual bug. And so um, what happened there is that I went ahead and created my first PR to uh, my first NeoVim <laughs> related PR, I guess. I had done like GitHub stuff before, um, disclaimer. Um, and so I created a, a GitHub issue. I said, I explained the problem. And then it said like, oh, never mind, I fixed it. But then I was like, wait, is it okay if I actually contribute this to the plugin because this is a bug? And I did. And so around June 28th, um, I just like copy pasted the thing from my config. Um, and this is actually not part of my, of the PR. It was probably just still Lua making like something. Um, and that was it. And that was my first PR to know them. Um, and that's how it got started. Um, I started like realizing that a lot of the stuff that I was configuring were actual like bugs in the plugins that I loved. And um, I started just like creating these PRs. Um, a way that I, oops, sorry. A way that I, um, that I like debugged this through is like, I don't know if everyone knows this, um, maybe you don't, but if say, let's look at another plugin like mini files, which is like one of my favorites, um, which is like this amazing like tree explorer that you have. Um, I don't know if anyone can see that, but, um, I realized that I could actually use like the debugger to step through the code of the plugin. And so, um, say that I'm like, I don't know, um, I want to debug like part of my config that I created, I had created a custom mapping. And so I would just be able to set up a breakpoint, then open another instance of NeoVim do whatever I wanted to do and then debug my config. And like, if you go to definition on this thing, then you will go to wherever your plugin manager puts stuff. And then I would be able like to debug the code. And once I would like understand the problem, if there was a problem, I would contribute the PR. And so um, this is actually how I ended up um, contributing according to GitHub more than 20 PRs to full key um, related plugins. And by the way, I need to know, like, how do you pronounce his name? Is it like folk, folky, folke? Um, I need to figure this out. Um, but anyway, um, you can see from my GitHub history, I, I created a bunch for trouble. Um, also noise is definitely like once of the most ambitious and complex and amazing plugins that I've ever seen. Um, 
and it's also like a bunch of hacks put together in a very elegant way um but yes this is how i like i had a bunch of folky plugins and i just started like contributing folky super nice and it was like oh yet another pr um and let's see one of them um Let's see which one it's an interesting one. I guess let's look at the first one. Um, it is for trouble. There was like previously you would only see the first line of that of a diagnostic message, even if um, the diagnostic had like multiple lines. And so um, I just added some stuff of like adding some extra new lines, you know, white spacey side candy, and um, I added that. Um, it was not too hard. Um, I want to to say that, like, I, I'm not a smart person. I just spent too much time staring at code. Um, it took me, like, a very long time to understand this. And this is why, like, I say that I just, like, use the Lua debugger to step through the code and understand what was going on. Um, and at this point that I had, like, created so many GitHub PRs and um, using, like, so many plugins that I that I loved, I started having this idea that I wanted to like create my own plugin, but I didn't know what. And so um, I, I don't know if it was already mentioned before, but I work for TypeScript and I was like writing this new feature um, for only hints of making them clickable in editors where the mouse matters. Um, and so in other editors, unmentionable, um, inlay hints are clickable. Um, and so I was like creating this feature and that involved um, writing this monster of a switch statement. And I was like going through each case, considering each type of TypeScript AST node. And at some point I got distracted and I thought, it would be nice if I would be able to sort the case statements of these switch statements alphabetically. And I cannot do that by just like selecting a visual range and like doing sort because like that wouldn't consider like, that would sort all of the lines, but I wanted to preserve the internal structure of the case statement and sort them alphabetically from like whatever label I was using in the case statement. And I thought this feels like something that tree seeder would be able to do. Um, and that was all that I thought. I had no idea of how that would be done, um, but I thought like it would be so cool to have like a tree seeder based sorter. And so I, I started thinking about this idea and um, I thought like, well, this is amazing, but I also know nothing about tree seeder or like the Veeam tree seeder module APIs that Neo Veeam exposes. And so what I decided to do instead was trying to tackle an existing issue in Neo Veeam that was tree seeder related, just to have like my first experience with tree seeder and learn more about the, AP the APIs before creating my own plugin. And so um, this is how I contributed my first PR to um, Neo Veeam which was creating the um, the query editor. Um, the reason I, I chose this one, it's because it actually had like the label of complexity low and it felt like, oh, very good, good first issue. And I thought like, oh, this will be easy. This won't be like, um, this won't be like hard to tackle. And I mean, it wasn't like extremely hard, but it was not trivial. Um, and so I remember that the first commit that I made was just like updating the documentation. And it was like, okay, I have no idea how this code base works. Um, but you can see from the PR description that I, I made so many questions. I like created the PR, um, the draft PR at that point. And I was like, can someone point me like, what do I need to do? I was so lost. And the NeoVim maintainers were so nice of just guiding me and telling me like, oh yes, that's a bug, that's a feature. Um, and just like um, guiding me through this process that it really made 
it, it wasn't like, oh, you just need to figure out everything by yourself. It was like I was leading this feature, um, but I was also getting the guidance from like all of these super nice people. Um, and so, yeah, and uh, I keep doing that. Um, and so this is how the, the query editor was born. Um, if you go here and um, first inspect tree and then open the, and I'll use the mouse, pardon me. Um, and if you go here and type O when you're in inspect tree, you open the, the query editor. And um, yeah, I think that I, I learned a lot. I still haven't written the tree seeder um, plugin that I had in mind. Um, but I think that this is, um, I learned a lot. And at that point I thought, well, this is a really fun project and um, I kind of want to do more stuff. And um, going back to how everything got started in my config, again, I was configuring my, my NeoVim setup and again, mentioning noise, I was, I had decided to not use noise anymore because I actually enjoyed the default like command line experience and I didn't want to have like as many notifications. So I was fine with just using like the built-in message system. And, um, but the only reason I couldn't leave noise, it was because of the hover. Um, I was like, the built-in hover looks so ugly. I really don't like it. Um, I really like how noises tree seeder hover just like looks prettier and uses tree seeder and it looks better with my color theme. And so I thought like, okay, I'm going to like contribute this feature just because I want to <laughs> remove noise from my config. And this is how the other PR that um, you probably know me for in, in NeoVim, it is um, used tree seeder for stylized markdown. Um, and waiting GitHub to load. Um, this was a very um, hard one as well because there were a lot of, um, this involved deprecating some of the previous approach. Um, and there were there was a lot of discussion. Um, you can see from the 88 comments in this conversation. Um, but this is actually something that I really like about NeoVim is um, how every contributor, it's very passionate and very opinionated in a good way. Like you will never see this kind of discussion in like a VS Code issue. Um, I feel that just having like people being so passionate about the conceal level, it is, I find it truly hilarious. And, but like, it really makes it a very fun um, experience. And um yeah, I think that for now, this is all that I had. Um, I'll stop for now. And if anyone has any questions, I wanted to leave some time for Q&A. So I'll go back and stop sharing. And yeah.